Hi, everybody. This is a wee bit of alchemy. I'm Rick Barrett. Welcome. So tonight we're going to start off by going through that um, spiraling exercise that we've been playing with the last couple of weeks. Do that as a uh, to get everything moving, and um, then I want to get into something which is uh, near and dear to my heart, which is probing into the spiritual side. The Tai Chi Chuan is a spiritual path by actually looking at the opening in terms of uh, some of the really fundamental principles in uh, the Taoist uh, literature. So uh, let's start off by uh, uh, getting up and um, uh, first let's, let's do a a uh, very simple qual warm up. So put your right foot forward, pick up your left heel. So all your weight is in that right leg. Feel the weight centered over the lateral line along, or the, the medial line along the big toe line, uh, the ball of the foot. Reach with the crown of your head, tuck in the chin, open the jade pillow gate. And really sink, release down into the quad. Okay, so feel the ball of the foot, set the knee and then spiral down to the right and just release into that and just get that, just get comfortable with that. So the idea here is we're not pushing the butt out to the side at all. And then we turn back to the center. So there's no lateral movement at all. It's just feel the ball, set the knee and then you're spiraling down that uh, central pillar. Release down into that and then turn back to center. John? Or turn back Richard. to Richard. Spiral down to the right. Release. And back to center. Now feel the ball of the right foot. Set the right knee and spiral down to the left. I uh, know I've already up. started it. So uh, at this point, and we turn I'll back go to center. Out and then come back in again. And spiral down to the left. Release. Thinking into that. Into that foot. Really just the hang movie. there for a moment and just really feel into that, getting the the uh, allowing that that claw to really open up, opening up the groin area and then turn back to center. Let's go back to go into the left foot now. Pick up the front heel, the right heel. And so yeah. the yeah. little weight over yeah. the ball of the left foot, set the left knee, and really find your central equilibrium there, and then Spiral down to the left and just release down there and just really sink into that. Turn back to center. And spiral down to the left. Hang there a moment. Okay. And Close that center. whole window. And spiral down to the left. And go back to the link. And back to center. Good. Now through the ball, you know, set the knee, spiral down to, to the right. The Release, hang there a moment. Link. So we're getting soon, we're releasing down and this is what is it's opening up the right. energy passage through the hip area okay, and back to center. Let's spiral down to the right. We're really getting comfortable sinking. Okay. Going down to meet the earth Close and out of back to completely. center. And and I push your left foot you forward, know, your right foot right back. Pick up your uh, okay. pick up your right heel. Feel the ball. Okay. Set the knee, and then spiral down to the left. So you're loading out of that front leg. You're releasing down. So there's no lateral movement at all. You're just releasing down and then turn back to center. And spiral down to the left. Think. And turn back to center. So notice what we're doing here is we are turning the waist. But we in the classics, they talk about turning the waist, but they don't really tell you much about how to get it done. If we just turn from the waist, not much is happening. We want to actually move from down here. So we're sprouting down to the left. So the waist turns, that's for sure. But it's actually the pivot points down here at the quad. And in this case, it's in the left quad. It has far back to center. Crawl down to the right, release down. So again, the waist turns. 
and then back to center. But the quasi the, uh, is what allows that to happen. It puts the clutch in, allows us to shift here, spiral down to the right, release, get, get comfy there, and back to center. And spiral down to the right. Good. Back foot, pick up your uh, front heel, find your central equilibrium to the ball, set the knee, and spiral down to the right, release. Turning the waist, back to center, you can see the waist turns, so we're pivoting at that, at the hip joint. And spiral down to the right. Knee loading up, and back to center. Spiral down to the right. Notice as we do this, the right leg becomes more substantial. That is, it becomes denser, more fixed, more located, and back to center. Spiral down to the left. The left leg, the right leg is still more substantial. It gets more substantial the more we commit to it. Back to center. Spiral down to the left. And back to center. One more. Release, sink, and back to center. Good. Okay. So let's um, use that to um, do that furling exercise. Kind of a, a white crane exercise has kind of a, evokes that kind of energy. It's something I, I cooked up, but it's a, um, the, Basic idea is we are, we're doing this, okay? And then we are, boom, like that. So that's the idea. So we start with the, the weight in the front leg, the, uh, the right foot, feel the ball, set the knee, good, and just spiral down to the left. And as we do that, you reach out with the right hand, point your index finger, and you want to set the elbow. So just feel into that. Now, as you turn, you're releasing the claw. Now you turn to the right. And as you do that, you rotate palm up. So your, your thumb is pointing to the right. You're reaching out with the fingers. You're setting the elbows. You continue to turn. And as you do that, you rotate the forearm. You set the elbow again, and you rotate the forearm so you're pressing out. Notice that both arms are pressing out. Both elbows are reaching. Good. Now feel the ball of the left foot. Set the left knee and spiral down to the right. And as you do that, the right hand starts to pull down. The left hand reaches out, reach with the finger, set the elbow. Now, rotate, uh, turn to the left and rotate the left forearm. Palm up. Set the elbow again and turn more to the left and reach out. Open. Do the ball of the right foot, set the right knee, spiral down to the left. Left hand starts to come down, right hand reaches out, set the elbow. That means you're, you're reaching out with that elbow. You, this, what we're doing here is we're disconnecting from the shoulder as we do that. Rotate the right forearm, so the palm is facing up. As you turn, and then set the elbow again, and rotate the forearm. Feel the ball of the left foot, set the left knee, spiral down to the right. Reach to the left hand, pull down with your right. Set the left elbow, rotate the, the, uh, the, uh, Forearm and turn. 
set the left elbow and rotate and open. Do it the other foot. So all we're doing here is we're, we're learning to coordinate the central equilibrium, sung kwa, and uh, energetic coherence. We're reaching with the elbows, we're getting all the things we've been talking about and putting them into a package that you can kind of practice. And, uh, and it's also a really effective martial arts move. It has a lot of a lot of applications, which we'll get into at some other point. But the right now, I just want you to feel the juice. You can't, its applications are, are ineffectual if you don't have the, if you don't have the chin. So we're getting the chin first. Okay, so feel the ball of the left foot. Good. Set the, uh, set the left knee and spiral down to the right. As you do that, you reach with the left hand, reach with the left the index finger, set the elbow and rotate. Turn. Set the elbow, left elbow again, and rotate. Now your weight is primarily it's about 80% in the left leg now. Feel the ball of the right foot, set the right knee, spiral down to the left, right hand reaches to the left, left hand pulls down, set the right elbow, rotate the forearm, palm up, turn, set the elbows and open. You weigh about 80% in your back leg now. Feel the ball of the left foot, set the left knee, spiral down to the right, reach with the left hand, Left index finger, set the left elbow, rotate. Turn, set the left elbow, rotate again, and open. Right ball, set the right knee, spiral down to the left. Reach with the right hand. Set the right elbow, turn. Set the right elbow, and Rotate. Oops. Step in. Deep breath. And clear. Clear the cheek. Any questions on this one? Lynn. 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 Hey, Lynn. I have a question on when you end that move, are you yes. you're turned beyond center with your core or are you at center? So meaning if we're if we're saying the back foot, we're we're like this, right? Right. So or this is this is straight ahead. Okay. And then same thing over here. So I'm like this, I'm squared up to you. Okay, okay, cool. I was going too far. It's, um, if you go farther, you're, uh, you've actually started the next move. Mm -hmm. you've, you've, you've started a, you know, you, you're really, you to, to go much farther than that, you have to release the claw to do that. Because we're kind of full open here. And then if I want to go farther than that, I have to start to collapse the uh, the quad to do that. Right. It might, the way it feels in my body, you might might feel it different. No, I, I know what you're saying. That's why I asked, because it didn't feel quite yeah. right. So, yeah. so if I, I want to go like, this is full young here. This is like, boom, okay, I'm this ready. This is as young as it gets. Anything beyond this is I'm heading in the yin direction. So what do I do? Oh, okay, oh, I'm gonna go like this and I get yin and turn and then young. Ah, here I am again. So we get that, get that going. Anybody else? Sandy. Sandy. Hey Rick, uh, I had a question about the, when you set the elbows. Yeah. Um, are you 
are you reaching kind of down at a 45 or more straight out when you set the elbow? Um, good question. So let's say I'm here like this, do, 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 boom, I'm rotating. So it's uh, it's down a little bit. The It's it's below the wrist but uh, and below the shoulder. So I guess it is down a bit. I wouldn't say it's 45. It could be, but 45 would... I'm, 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 the most important thing is is that it's reaching out, right? So that there's that there's an extension that is opening the shoulder joint. That's the key part of it. And um, if you do that, you can get a much bigger range of motion. I know for years the way I taught it was, you know, hey, you drop your elbows, and so you can relax your shoulders which is fine, except for that's not very strong. It's not, it, it, it's not as connected. It may be relaxed, you may get, you get your shoulders relaxed, but if you actually have to issue from that, then we tend to then activate the shoulders because we have no, no connection there. Whereas if I'm opening, the, then I can do it down here, I can do it here, I can do it up here, I can do it up here. As long as, as, as I'm reaching with my elbow, then I have the chi is moving through my shoulder joint quite nicely, and I don't have to be limited in my range of motion. Does that help? Yeah, yeah, thank you. Yes. You bet. Good. Anybody else? Okay, grab a seat. Let's talk a minute. All right. Okay, so one of the things that I've been writing about a lot lately and got a lot on my mind uh, is um, Taiji Chuan as a spiritual path and trying to get to a sense of what that means. And um, one of the key elements to that you know, is that Taiji draws from one of what's called the three treasures, which are, which are Chan Buddhism, Confucianism, and Taoism. And in the Taoist, in the very beginning of the, of the Tao Te Ching, there's, we, we have this explanation, and actually reappears later in the, uh, in, in, the, in the book also, this explanation of you know, how things are coming together. I guess it, it probably is not in the first chapter that we talk about this exactly, it's more later, I think maybe chapter 40, if I'm not mistaken. Anyway, the, uh, the idea is that that from the Wuji, the nothing, comes the Taiji, the one. And from the Taiji comes the two, which is the interplay of yin and yang, which then leads, which gives birth to the three, which is heaven, earth, and man. And that leads to the 10,000 things. So, Thinking about that, so we go and, and, and applying it not just to like this, say, uh, the mythological creation of, of the cosmos, but in actuality into something that we can witness every day. And when we're plugged in, we can actually feel this in our bodies. And that is that we begin coming from the nothing. So let's say if you're doing a Tai Chi form, you, before you get into place, before you even have the idea that you're going to do a Tai Chi form, there's nothing there. There's, you're starting with a nothingness, which then you get an idea like, hey, I'm going to do my Tai Chi now. And then you assume a position, you assume a form. And that form is the Tai Chi, the, the wholeness to the extent that you can actually activate this state of wholeness, what I've been calling coherence for a number of years now, that degree of, of unity that you can experience then allows you to move and maintain that coherence through movement. And then that leads to that duality, 
that polarity of yin and yang, then leads to the three, which they talk about heaven, earth, and man, which I, I prefer to think of it in terms of heaven being insubstantiality, earth being substantiality, and the human being consciousness. And it is through the activation of consciously interacting in that way with first embracing the polarity and then, then opening to this, this substantial and insubstantial that you then can manifest whatever. That's the 10,000 things, it's the, the manifest world. So whatever you, if we're talking about creating a Taiji form, we start with nothing, we go to take a form, then we load up the form, and then we split, we separate the yin and yang, and then we start to encounter the substantial and the insubstantial, which then allows us to take the various shapes. So the, um, there's a great quote from uh, Martin Buber, writing about Tao, that uh, I think is appropriate for this, and I'm going to uh, I'll read to you now. It's called, he says that Tao is unity in change and transformation. That's just what I was just saying there. It's unity in change and transformation. And the perfect revelation of Tao is the man who combines the greatest change with the purest unity. So that's very much in keeping with what I've been talking about for a number of That is, if you're able to maintain that state of coherence as you go through the transformation, then you are better able to access the deepest level of this art, which le then leads you to this opening of the spiritual illumination possible in it. He goes on to say that Though, though Tao is the path, order, and unity of everything, it exists in things only potentially until it becomes living and manifest through its contact with the conscious being of the united man. So that, that Tao is, exists there potentially for you, but until you actually engage it with your whole being, it exists only as a potential. And that, but once you, you get into that state of wholeness and engage it, then you are starting to plug into this, the way, you know, you plug into the mystery. And the mystery is the foundation of all the internal martial arts. And, you know, Pastor Young calls it the mystery. And that's because it's, beyond our ability to talk about, think about, conceive it. You know, we can't put it into qualities, but it is the source of whatever it is we're doing. He goes on to say that um, thou appears in men as the uniting force that overcomes all deviation from the ground of life, as the completing force that heals all that is sundered and broken. So the, uh, when you do plug into that, then we are plugging into the big chi. But beyond that, beyond even the big chi, there is um, an awareness that comes through that opens doors to perceptions, awarenesses, understandings that are not available to us whenever we are limited to the action of the conscious mind. Uh, does that make sense, everybody? <laughs> we're going we're gonna to do something with this. <laughs> we're good? <laughs> okay, so. Uh, I'm throwing you to the deep end of the pool here, but I, I got a I got a plan. <laughs> <laughs> if we're 
we're approaching this as a spiritual practice, as a possible spiritual practice. You know, that is, can we plug into that which goes beyond what is ordinarily uh, part of our lives and becomes something much greater, plugs us, connects us up to something much bigger. So we have this, we have this movement from the from nothing into something, and then we go and we from there we split and we start to engage this process in movement. We become part of that Tao that is expressed through this unceasing movement, this unceasing change that is occurring. And we're kind of, we get to leave the kiddie pool and, and swim up into the, uh, into the deep waters and get pulled along by this powerful force that is, uh, that underlies the whole, the whole system. And the beautiful thing is we get to keep our water wings. We, <laughs> we, we, we get to do it nice and easy. And uh, there's, uh, we can step in and out whenever we want. And uh, so what I'm, I'd like to do is to put it in the context of the opening. And I've talked before many times about how I consider this to be the most important movement in the form, the opening. Why? Because we're going from nothing into something and we are loading up before we take off. And Peggy is, is primarily designed to circulate energy. It, cir it cultivates gin and circulates the chi. And how well it does either of those is heavily dependent on your ability to load up. That is to mobilize the chi. And uh, so I've talked before about the opening and broke it down into its, uh, its very um, uh, physical as aspects. I'd like to do it with you. And we'll do it like as a, uh, as a meditation and get a chance to hang with, uh, with this. So the, um, every Taiji form that I've, I've uh, seen associated with has some, there's always a start from a neutral posture. And so we're going to do this one, which I get a follow along on. Uh, this is one that's very familiar to me. It's the one we do with the uh, young, uh, young Cheng Fu's 13 original postures. But it's, uh, it, it doesn't matter what your form does. You can, you can, you start a different way. That's okay. It's still, what's going to happen is you're going to be going from uh, that, that state into something else. So whenever we begin, we begin with, in this case, we put the, put the heels together, toes apart, and we knees are unlocked. You relax your lower back, allow your, your sacrum to drop, and you reach upward with the crown of your head. And you just hang there for a moment. And here we have assumed that the, this is the Taiji form that is that it has not yet been energized. Okay, so just getting it, this is, we've gone from nothing into the initial stage of just assuming a form. Now we're gonna mobilize the chi. Feel the balls of your feet. Reach a little more with the crown of your head. Open the jade pillow gate. Tuck in the chin. Reach with the fingers. This is your index finger. Reach with your elbows. And notice that the chi has mobilized. How much? That's going to be dependent on you. How much you're willing to invest in and cultivating it, 
on which she is going to be available to you. Part of a regular practice is to be able to immediately crank up the chi, mobilize the chi to a very high level. Kind of like you're, you're in a, um, a drag racer and you're gunning your engine at the stoplight. You know, waiting to, at the starting line, getting ready to just take off. The key here, though, is you are not your energy. You are the calm center at the, at, at the, in, in, the, in the middle there. That, and the chi that is animated by you is excited and excitable. And this runs counter to the way I learned Tai Chi for years, and that which was basically just to start off and get as relaxed as possible and just kind of ease into it, and eventually the chi catches up to you. If at all, if it even, if it even mentioned. This is different. We're saying, no, before we do anything, we're going to the, this is the Tai Chi that has. Virtually infinite potentiality. How much we can manifest, that depends on how willing you are, how much you can tolerate of the big chi. But right now you're plugged into the big chi and you're letting some of it through. As much as you can stand. Feel the balls of both feet. So the awareness is 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 divided between both feet. We're initiating this process now. What we're doing, we're creating a substantiality. We're bringing attention to the balls of the feet. We start to feel into that connection with the earth. We're starting to create a substantiality. Now feel the ball of the right foot. You're not shifting any weight yet. You're just feeling the ball and just connecting up through the ball of the foot and into the earth. Just by the fact of you bringing your awareness to the ball of the right foot, you have initiated the process of making that leg, the right leg, substantial. And in so doing, the left leg becomes less substantial. Now set your knee, find that sweet spot where you engage the ball of the right foot through your knee so that you're actually feeling a post there that's going down, which you allow to, allows you to get even more substantial in that right leg, allowing you to commit even more to that. We're setting, we're creating a substantial. What we're doing here, before we can take a step, we're going to step out to the left, which is a yang movement. Before we can do that, we need to create a yin foundation. And this gives us a clue about everything else in the form is the yin will proceed, precede the yang. So then spiral down to the left. You're loading up the right leg. Right leg is your substantial leg, and you're spiraling down to the left, just like we were doing a little while ago. You're sinking into that and just feeling into the substantiality of that leg. What well, we've gone, gone from 50 50 split to now there's about a 70% of your substantiality is in your right leg and 30 in your left. Turn to the right. As you do that, you empty out the left leg even more so that the right leg becomes even more substantial. You're, you're turning of the releasing or the turning of the waist is happening, pivoting at that at that quad, happening at the hip joint. But you notice that your left leg is pretty much empty now. You've got about 90% of your weight in that right leg. So 
Let's take it a little more, pick up the left heel and sink a little more into that right leg so that you're really feeling like 95% of your weight, you're gonna to go to 100. And you're just on the toe of your left foot now. And you're really getting confident in that left leg or the right leg, you're getting confident in your right leg, your left heel is up. What that does is it allows you to confidently make a step to the left without lunging. Why you're able to maintain your root and your energetic connection and you know through your earth connection in that right leg. So that earth is coming, is you're connecting your energy, you're grounding through that the right leg, but you're also allowing energy to come up through. Reaching with the the crown of the head, the knee one, and that is opens up the insubstantial, the young chief in the heavens. So now you're going to step out with your left foot with an empty step. Just move to the side and feel that foot just going into its place with the right still keeping about 95%, 90-95% of the substantiality there. Your elbows are still reaching, opening the shoulders. You're still reaching with the crown of your head. So notice that in this posture, you are still prepared. You didn't lose anything. There's no point here where you're floating. We want to get a Tai Chi form that does not float at any point. We want to, we want to have a continuous energetic connection throughout the whole thing. So this sets up the template for that. Now feel the ball of your left foot. So notice that just by doing that, just by feeling the ball of the left foot, we have begun the process of creating more substantiality in the left leg now. The right leg is saying, yeah, about time. So feel that ball of the left foot. Feel it reaching down through the earth and allowing that earth chi to come up making that energetic connection with the left leg. Now set the left knee. Feel that. We're establishing a post there that we're going to use to be able to turn. We're going to turn from the waist, but first we need to release down and since we're going to be turning to the left, we need to what first spiral down to the right. As we do that, we start to load up the left leg more. By, turn, by spiraling down to the right, we're starting to sit down into that left leg more. The right leg still has a lot of the substantiality, but the left leg is starting to take over. Notice that there's Continuous chi flow as you're as you're doing that. Your hands are still feeling the fact that you are mobilized. Your chi is mobilized and it's and it's circulating very nicely. Now feel the ball of your left foot again. Set the left knee and turn from the waist, but pivoting with the left claw. So you're your left leg is going to be turning your body. You're not pushing it into place. You're pulling it and the torque that's generated by the turn of the waist is going to create its own chin. And as you do that, you pick up the ball of your foot a bit and pivot on the heel so that now with both feet are pointing forward, your body is square up in in front of you, and you're feeling the balls of both feet now. You set the knees. So what we've done is we've gone from Tai Chi, we mobilized the Chi, we separated the yin and yang, created substantial and insubstantial, and now we're reconvening 
We're recreating a new Taiji, a new state of unity, wholeness, fullness that includes all that energy and information that preceded it before. So just hang here for a moment and just feel into the energy that you've been generating that didn't exist before you started this. You created that. You created that form. Not independent of, of everything else, but in concert with it. Interdependent with the with the heavens and the earth and everything else. It all worked together, but it was only brought into being by your conscious intention to make that happen. Step in, deep breath. Disappear the two. Dissolve. That energy continues to exist and flow through you as a potentiality, but it's not something you have to hold on to. The more you can create it and throw it away and create some more and throw that away, the easier it is to be able to do that at will. Great, have a seat. Questions? Jonathan. Hey, same question as last week. I, <laughs> I thought you had taught it to me differently, but I've been doing it differently, but testing it out. Since the big move is when you lift that left leg, I don't see why the spiral down to the right doesn't precede that movement. Why you leave that to the end after the foot's already moved. I mean, I just thought it was so powerful the way I first understood it and maybe I understood it wrong, but you know, first we're spiraling down to the left, but loading up the right, just that concept was powerful, really powerful. And You're then- Spiraling down to the left, but right. loading up the right leg. That's right, we're loading up, we're, turn, we're spiraling to the left, loading up the right leg. Then yeah. we're turning to the right, okay, so loading gonna, it up a little I, more. Give me full screen. I'm gonna I'm gonna act this out here. So here we are. We're like this. So I'm spiraling down to the left, loading up the right leg. You're loading up the right leg. There's a concept yeah. right there, right? Then you're uh, you're turning uh, to the right, and turning now loading right. up the right leg with still a turn, loading, still not on a the spiral. right leg. Right. Now yeah. you want us to sort of now go to the lift, but why? Why not spiral, now spiral down to the right? Load it up yet even more. Well, you do. That's th three loads. That's, that's what I said here. I said, you. that's when you pick up your left heel and spiral down again to the right. Oh, okay, I didn't hear the spiral, okay. I, I okay. I, I, I missed this, I missed so, you so, saying the spiral. So I thought you said it to right. the end. So, that, so here we are, so, so what we do, we spiral down to the left, Turn to the right, okay? I want to pick up this leg and I'm not going to be able to do it easily unless I, ah, uh, spiral down to the right, which then right. allows so me to pick up that left foot That's great. Okay. and be able to step out very comfortably, right? Right. That, and then that all you need to do is so, turn. So um, that's, where that, that's where that spiral, that other spiral, so then I step out. So here, 
where the next spiral comes, I feel the ball set the knee. That's in the left leg now. Right. That's that's what uh, that's where this spiral is, is happening. So this spiral down to the to the right, and then turn. Okay. Okay. Hopefully that's that that's clear. Is that clear to everybody? Rick, you got some? No. You're good. Okay. Stan. You're on mute, Stan. So on okay. Hey. Uh, all right. Uh, yes. I think it's maybe more noticeable when we're doing as slow as we're doing this. But uh, throughout, you know, just holding that, uh, I seem to be like, yeah, I wouldn't call it a shaking, but there seems to be a certain amount of movement. Is it just adjusting or is it because there's movement there? Uh, you'll have to be a little clearer. Okay, uh, when you hold, a, you go into the spiral, for instance, and yeah. then turn. Uh, I, it seems like I, as much as I try, I can't, I can't seem to have that post driven into the ground. It's there, but I seem to be sort of uh, shifting a little bit just to maintain it. Is that- Most, people, I, most people will, whether they notice it or not. We'll do exactly that, and so that's that's practice. Oh, okay. It, you're, you're trying to overcome many, many decades <laughs> of doing it a different way, yes. and to be able to tell your body that, oh, we're going to do this this way now. It requires a a laser focus. Whenever you're uh, when you're first learning this, you really have to, you know, when you're practicing it. And that's why we slow it way down like this is to really yes. see like oh no this is you know this is this is something this is a thing so if i'm you know if i do if i do it in super slow motion and let's say the way i i learned it originally you know with i'd be standing like this just to do like that and then they say okay shift your weight into your right leg and i go like this and then step out and you know, step out and then, oh, okay, set that down, good. Now shifted your left leg and then back to center. And that was, that was the way it, way it did it. If you do that in super slow motion, it's, it's, you can feel how it's very difficult to remain rooted. Yes. And borderline impossible to remain rooted whenever <laughs> you do it that way. It's uh, if you're because you're locking your hip joints and it has become you've gone from rooting into trying to remain balanced. And but this is the way that Taiji is usually taught. That's the way I learned it for decades and taught it for decades. So it uh, it's, you know, something that is uh, it just what happens. But the uh, uh, what I'm presenting to you is, you know, an alternative to that, something yes. where you can, because then you can apply this in every move in the form. Once you, once yes. you get this, so there's never a point where your root is broken, where you are floating, which you don't really notice unless you do it super slow or you're doing it and someone is leaning on you and yes. trying, to, uh, trying to uproot you. Nora, you had something? Thank you. But does it get to the point where the there's a the, the, the distinction between set the knee, load up, spiral, turn, feel the ball, other ball foot, set the knee, that it becomes seamless? Yes. And also invisible. So like, you know, if I'm doing it, I exaggerate it for you guys, but if I'm doing it for me, it's more like this. You know, it just, it just uh, something that I can do all those pieces without, without exaggerating, without, you know, articulating them because it's all happening inside. Right. Because I just started experiencing that where it just became, it was like part of just a thread. I don't know. Just Good. A... Beautiful. I would say exaggerate it like hell for, for a while 
So you have it so that it's just like, oh yeah, I got this. So that you can you can do it if someone, you know, someone twice your size is pushing on you and you say, yeah, okay, no problem. You want to have that uh, you want to have that feeling there, that confidence that oh yeah, this is this is the Taiji I have been looking for. This is the Taiji that I want to mm -hmm. cultivate going forward. This is the real deal. Richard. Um, this to me, as we sort of talked about before, is what, we've, what we're learning is how to transfer substantiality. At some point, yeah. the weight transfers from one side to the other. That's unavoidable. That's right. But when we're learning how to transfer not the weight, but the substantiality, we can make the transition without being unrooted. Um, and that's it seems to me as to as to why we learn to transfer substantiality and stop thinking about transferring weight, because it allows us to make to make the transfers without um, being uprooted or unrooted or uncentered. So when I, I I thought that when I first thought that. I started really thinking about this is a technique to transfer substantiality and the weight is not an issue. It will come along as it needs to. Right. That's a brilliantly articulated. Thank you. That's quite, quite, quite lovely. And um, um, heard you. yeah, yeah that, that, that's exactly right. Exactly right. The uh, uh, transfer of substantial, just like the, the turn of the waist. Yes, the waist turns, but if I think turn the waist, I'm not gonna get there. You know, I'm going, but if I think, you know, release the qua and turn, then I, then cool stuff happens. And uh, so that's, uh, uh, it's the same idea. So, you know, the classics are not wrong in saying what they're saying, but it's just that, it's not enough to. Yeah. Yes. It's not enough to get you there. That we need to we need to connect the dots, so that it's a uh, it's easy to um, uh, yeah, easy to easy to follow. Valerie. Um. Just to to add on something to what Richard articulated so brilliantly. Um. I'm. <laughs> He's blushing. <laughs> <laughs> I find that I have to be very conscious of the qua being sung or none of that other stuff, the, you know, one becoming substantial, the other becoming less substantial. That won't happen if the qua isn't sung. That's right. That's right. So I don't want to forget the qua in there. And you, 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 can't be forgetting, you can't be forgetting no qua. No. <laughs> Rick. No qua, no how. From, from the blissful to the petty, I just wanted uh, you and Maria to know that you have a very small smudge right in the middle of your camera lens. You do, you yes. Look, you look like you have a big blemish on your face, Rick. So <laughs> just wipe, wipe that off. And that'll be fine. That's all I have to say. <laughs> Otherwise, it's you know just super awesome. Thank you. Unless thank you. Good, unless good, of course good your chi is causing that. If your chi is causing that, that, we'll just leave it. Okay. Clear the smudges. Ruby. The only thing I want I'm not to be nitpicky, but we're being pretty um, exacting in this, is uh, when we returned to do the, the clear. We kind yeah. of just we kind of just like let it go and stepped up. We didn't do any kind of reverse process to keep maintain the at the very end. We didn't do you know we kind of just stepped up. We didn't do the we didn't do the reverse process of how to get your feet back together in in, in an exact way. You mean we didn't? I'm not, following, I'm not following you. Here, let me let me um. Can you make make me big? <laughs> make me big. You know. So we were here. Can you see me? You're right. At, at the end, and then you said, "Okay, step up." And we just kind of stepped up. We didn't do any like how to okay. carefully 
Good point. Good point. I usually do. You're right. I did not do it in that uh, in that situation. Uh, you're right. I did not connect the dots. Thank you. But I'm curious. Maybe it's just like we're done, so it doesn't matter. Or no, no, no. I I usually do. Mm -hmm. I usually do say that. So you know, feel mm -hmm. the balls. Fifty. So I usually what I say to step in. So you're absolutely right. I was just it was kind of a shorthand, but it. Uh, but uh, uh, in in the interest of thoroughness. I could uh, I could be a little more um, detailed, so yes. It was, thank a big, you. it was kind of a relief not to have to do it, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> kind of let it slide. <laughs> it's it's just easy now. <laughs> uh -huh. um, I would uh, be uh, remiss to in, in, in full completion of this is I should mention that there is um, another quality another component to this, which I have deliberately avoided, uh, but I just want to include just in, you know, for, for completion's sake, and that is that we have the, the qua, but there's also the yao, which is this area here, and that actually is the driver, but I don't want to, I didn't want to bring it up because it's, and there's a lot of other things there, but just put that in, put a post-it note on that so that the idea is that I spiral down. So whenever I'm spiraling down, what's actually driving that is the yao. So that I'm bringing my awareness down to this part of my body. And that is, that is what is powering that, that spiral down. And then it also the turn. So it's, it is the, uh, you know, if this is the, the heads and the tails of the uh, of the waist turn, so the you could say that the yin part is the qua. It is the place that the space that where or the insubstantial part and the substantial part and the driver in this case the the yang part is is the yao. So whenever whenever I'm turning, let's say I'm going off my from my back foot, I set the ball, uh, set the knee, spiral down to the left, and I want to turn to the right. So that turn of the waist is being driven by the by the yao. So we've done some work with that before, in uh, you know a couple of months ago, and uh, just want to didn't want it to drop out entirely. But there are enough moving parts in this other thing that I didn't want to bring it up tonight. But uh, uh, just just put a put a post-it note on on Yao going forward. But that is definitely a part of it. And that's something that will kind of weave into the process as we go along. Cool. Anybody else? It's all great stuff. Thank you. Good uh, good good comments. Good questions. Stuff. <laughs>